Can AI win over big clients and help you make more money? Absolutely, and I wanna show you exactly how to do that. If you're a digital marketer, whether you're in-house working at an agency, maybe you're a social media expert or a web designer, I've got some huge news for you. I have finally come up with an AI service you can offer to your clients right now, and they're gonna love you for it. There's massive potential here, and it's very easy to get started. And today I wanna to walk you through this simple process of beginning to generate revenue with AI. This process is gonna give your clients immediate value. It's gonna allow you to start simple and then grow to more complex situations. You're gonna be able to earn while you learn, getting paid from the outset while continuously improving your AI skills. This starts with quick projects that lead right into recurring revenue so you can sustain your business while you're gaining AI expertise and competitiveness in the marketplace. If you're like many digital marketers or agencies out there, I know you've been struggling to figure out what to do about AI. I know many of you are fearful that it might be taking your jobs and I can empathize with that as I've been running a marketing agency for the past 10 years. And just like like you have been trying to figure out what to do about AI. I've come across many ideas. A lot of them seem very technical. Some of them seem very experimental and basically nothing felt like a fit until today. In today's video, I'm really excited to show you a complete blueprint for your new AI service offer. If you're new to the Blazing Zebra channel, I wanna welcome you and thank you for joining me on my journey of helping marketers and entrepreneurs around the world. My goal is to provide practical and actionable AI skills that'll drive your profitability and business success. If you like these videos, please check out my Patreon, where I have many different cheat sheets and other resources. The cheat sheet for today's video includes a full email sequence that you can send directly to your clients to get the ball rolling with this blueprint. Without further ado, here is the blueprint that I've come up with. It starts with creating a custom GPT for your clients that includes all of your client information. This is an absolute no-brainer. It's going to be a very useful tool. It's going to potentially give them some extra exposure and it takes very little time for you to build. Like websites or social media, every single company in the world is going to have something like this in the coming years, so it makes sense to get a jump on it. This is going to be the focus of the video today, and I'm excited to show you exactly how easy it is to build something useful here. You might be asking yourself, if it's so easy, aren't my clients going to just be doing this for themselves? And truth be told, some of them might, but most of them are just too busy to deal with anything like this. So you can help them by building something simple that'll open the door to many other possibilities with AI. Once you have this basic custom GPT built, you can use that as the foundation for an email responder that'll handle all of their inbound emails. And if they don't see the value in the GPT, they will for sure see value in the ability to getting an AI to respond to all the different inquiries that come into their inbox on a daily basis. Stay tuned to the end of the video where I get into this a little bit more and I also have some additional resources about that in the cheat sheet. Once you have those basics in place, you can move on to the maintenance phase. Just like website maintenance or social media, this is where the recurring revenue kicks in. In this phase, you'll be working to improve upon those initial basic tools, adding more complexity, more knowledge base, and more functionality. From there, the sky's the limit. In the fourth phase, you can begin talking with them about automating processes, whether that's for social media, for content generation, or other internal tools. Make sure to subscribe because I'm gonna be going through each of these phases in future videos. But for now, let's focus on this custom GPT. All right, so I'm gonna create a custom GPT on behalf of Stan's Donuts. I am not affiliated with Stan's Donuts other than the fact that I have probably gained quite a few pounds by eating their delicious donuts. This is what I've got on my mind this morning. So let's dive right in. I'm at their website. They're a wonderful multi-location uh, donut bakery in and around Chicago and Illinois. And they've got a pretty good website here, very similar to many local businesses. And what we're gonna do is just grab some stuff from their website and start dropping it into a Google Doc. So here we have our Google Doc. I'm just gonna copy this stuff into the Google Doc. What's great is they have this FAQ. This is gonna be very helpful. Um, so if your clients do not have FAQs, uh, you might want to work with them on digging that out of their brains, or you can do all that in sort of the maintenance phase, copying this into the Google Doc as well. They've got another FAQ about their catering service. Going to grab that. And of course, their menu. You definitely want to grab all of their hours and location and drop that into the doc. And you can go on and on like this, depending on the website, depending on the amount of information that the website has or the amount of information that you want to get started with. But I think you get the idea. I know there's fancier ways to scrape the website. If you know how to do those, go at it. But you want to pull a good amount of information off the website, especially just a little bit about them, the hours and locations and any FAQ information. From here, we're going to jump right into GPT-4. This is the paid version. This is what you're going to need to get started. 
You're going to go into the Explore tab. We're going to go Create a GPT. Um, and often I don't use this Create tab, but in this instance, I am going to use it. And I've just written here, I would like to create a custom GPT for Stan's Donuts, a fantastic donut shop in Chicago. Here's some information about Stan's. Dropping all that in, I'm going to hit Go. The big thing here with this Create tab is you don't want to do too much back and forth here. You want to get it to create a basic version, and then we're going to get into the Configure tab. This is a dangerous tab here. A lot of people make the mistake of doing a lot of back and forth, and you can actually overwrite something that's been working. So use this Create tab with caution. You can do everything you need to do really in this Configure tab, but this may be a good place to start as it will help you format the initial instructions of this custom GPT. You can see it's updating. It says we came with the GPT name Stan's Donut Helper. Does that sound good to you? I'm actually going to name it something else. I say let's name it Stan's Donuts and Coffee Donut Shop in Illinois. So if you know anything about SEO, this is very similar to the homepage title tag. You want to have some location information in there, some keywords, and definitely the brand name. According to these custom GPT guidelines, you do not want to add the letters GPT in there. That is frowned upon uh, as far as OpenAI's guidelines. So now it has generated a little picture here. I'm actually going to flip into the configure tab and go on from there. Again, you just want to do a couple basic things in the create tab and quickly get into the configure tab. Otherwise, you're going to get into trouble and you're going to erase some of the information that you've already uploaded. So we've got the name here, um, Stan's Donuts expert, friendly and informative. Yeah, that can work. This is just a little description here. As far as their image goes, I'm just going to grab their image off of social media. So here in X, you can just click on this, do a screen grab or download image as, save that to the desktop, swap this out, upload a photo here. Okay, so we've got the image looking good. The name looks good. The description looks okay. I might you know, finesse that a little bit if, if I was really presenting this to stands. But now in the instructions, we see that it is missing a lot of the information that we tried to upload into the Create tab. So this is going to be different each time. Take a look at it. It has a pretty nice introduction to the instructions, um, so it is helpful in that way. But now we want to upload all of that information that we gathered as a knowledge base. And we want to most importantly tell these instructions that it has access to that knowledge base because it's not going to necessarily know that. Uh, you'd think it would obviously know that if it's been uploaded, but we want to add something like this. I've written here, you have a document called Stan's Donuts Knowledge Base. It includes store information, hours, FAQs, and more. Use this information about Stan's Donuts to answer questions. Do not provide any information that is not related to this knowledge base. That's critical, and putting that in all caps seems to be something that these GPTs will respond to, but you want to make sure that it does not start answering questions unrelated to donuts. We want this chatbot focused on Stan's donuts and not going off on tangents in other directions or answering questions that are unrelated to donuts. So now back in this doc, I've titled it Stan's Donuts Knowledge Base. I'm going to download this. I'm going to download it as a text document. I think that's going to be the easiest for the AI to read, but I'm, I think it can use multiple uh, different formats. This is the one I've had success with. That's been downloaded. Now we're going into this knowledge section and I'm uploading that knowledge base. Conversation starters. Tell me about Stan's donut history. That's a good one. Can I order donuts for delivery? This one I might take out because there's not functionality here that's going to allow it to order donuts directly from this chat bot yet. These are things that I'm sure are on the way. These are some of the more advanced features that we're going to go through in future videos. But for now, I'm going to take this out because we don't want to mislead people into thinking that uh, they can order donuts directly from this bot. Do you have vegan donut options? What are the popular donuts at stands? You might want to think of um, something else. Can you list your locations? That might be a good one. Okay, and I am going to kill off web browsing and I'm going to kill off Dolly image generation code interpreter should be off. 
the action section. This is in the, you know, step four beyond section that I've mentioned in the blueprint. This will be an area for definitely a lot of future videos and resources. This would be how you may add actions where they can actually order donuts, etc. That gets a little more technical than what we're doing uh, right now, but it's nothing you can't figure out. Uh, so stick with me. Make sure to subscribe if you're interested in learning about that type of thing. But we should be pretty close here with Stan's Donuts. So I'm going to make sure to hit save. And then, um, so I don't represent Stan, so I am just going to throw this away. I'm not going to publish this as it would be outside of OpenAI's uh, guidelines because this is a trademark company and I would need to be in contact with them and be authorized to create this. But if I was, I would be able to click on everyone and share this. There's a couple other steps you would need to go through and that I'll show you here in a second. But first, let's test this out a little bit. Tell me about Stan's history. It's going into the knowledge base, which is great. And there it is. You've got some information about Stan's. I'm asking it, what donuts do you offer? Searching the knowledge base. This is the type of thing that's gonna get a lot faster in the future, I can guarantee it. There we go. And as a loyal customer of Stan's, I happen to know that all of this is very accurate particularly this lemon pistachio old fashioned is one of my favorites. I didn't know we were going to be covering that in the video today, but there you have it. Awesome. So like anything, this is just the basic start of this and you can continue to finesse it, fine tune it, adding extra knowledge, adding other instructions, testing different things out and for sure getting into the action phase. So if we were representing stands, we would want to uh, verify its website, connect this up and here's how you would do that. Go into your beta settings, builder profile, website, verify a domain. Here's the format it's looking for. You would submit that. It would give you a code just like this that you would need to add as a TXT record. Uh, and this is something you would need to do on GoDaddy or wherever the domain is hosted. This is very similar to um, anytime you need to verify any sort of Facebook marketing uh, code or Google Analytics, you could ask uh, a developer to do it or you could look up a tutorial on uh, adding this TXT record. A little bit technical, but something that you can figure out easily, especially if you're using GoDaddy, it makes it very easy. That way you would verify it and you'd be good to go. And ideally, hopefully this would show up in the GPT store and give your clients a ton more uh, exposure as that store is just getting off the ground. But either way, it's a very useful functionality you can share with your client and it leads right into this email responder. So this is going to be a topic of future videos. I'm going to have some resources about this in the cheat sheet. And that would be taking a uh, custom GPT like the one we've created, converting it into an assistant on the back end of, a, of OpenAI. And I'm going to create another video all about this. I'll also, again, have uh, information in the, in the cheat sheet connecting that AI assistant to uh, Zapier, which can then automatically read emails, look at that knowledge base, answer those emails, drop those emails into a draft folder in your client's email inbox where they can take a look at it, make sure it's accurate and just boom, 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 send them out one right after another so they don't have to think and don't have to really respond yet. They do get to weigh in and make sure that the emails are accurate. And that's what leads you right into this maintenance phase because this email responder is going to be able to cover a lot of the basics. What are your hours? Are you open this day, etc. But there are going to be some things that are not covered in this basic um, knowledge base that we've created and therefore you can just say okay client anytime you get an email that um, in your drafts there that is not uh, accurate forward it to me and I as part of the maintenance program will update the knowledge base so that we can accurately answer those emails going forward. And this is how you start to build out a powerful assistant, which you can then use for a lot of different things. This can be the base of a lot of different automated processes. Having a bot trained on the business can help with social media, can help with content creation. And then you can start to speak with your client about getting into uh, automating other processes. I have another whole video on uh, how to 
use these GPTs to automate processes. I'll put a link to that in the description. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this and thanks for joining me on my mission of helping marketers and entrepreneurs around the world by providing profitable AI skills. If you got something out of this, make sure to check out the Patreon. I have a cheat sheet directly related to this video. It includes all of this in a step-by-step -step format. It also includes some email copy that you can use to start uh, getting your clients excited about this and opening that conversation. You can also use that email copy for getting the ball rolling with your internal team. I have some more information about that email responder piece in there. Again, make sure to subscribe as I'm going to be diving into that in a video very soon. And uh, make sure to drop me a note in the comments. What questions do you have? What parts of this uh, seemed confusing? What can I help with? I want to make other videos about it. And as always, feel free to subscribe and hit that like button. And I'll see you on the next video. Make the dreams come true.